All right, guys, Blair Halver here. I'm here with uh, one of our clients, Ed Lavin. And Ed has just completed his first creative real estate transaction uh, after going through our program. So I wanted to uh, get Ed on the line here and have him just tell a little bit of his story so you can, uh, you know, kind of see what this looks like and, uh, you know, before, during, and after going through this thing and, and what life is like now for Ed. Uh, now he's going through it. So Ed, why don't we just start at the beginning you know, before you got involved with us and our program, what was what were you trying to do? Were you already trying to do real estate or or not? Or what what was it that you were like out there like looking for? Uh, well, it's been a long story. I have um, I've been inv I started my real I registered my real estate business in 2011, and I have been back and forth between uh, various gurus and. Uh, going to YouTube University, and I've uh, learned a certain number of things, whether it be short sales or dealing with foreclosures, REO properties, and learned a lot about it, but I was unable to implement any strategy because I haven't had the money. Um, and the other aspect of it is that I kind of had a little bit of an ethical challenge uh, with the concept of like wholesaling. Uh, where I'm going to take somebody that's uh, got their back against the wall, um, they're in a bad spot, and then what? Then hammer, you know, a couple more um, blood dollars out of their back pocket of what they don't even have in the first place just to make a deal so I can make a small spread. Uh, you know, it's very difficult to recognize that or, you know, maybe even you know, saving up some money so that way I can buy the wholesale deal from somebody else. Uh, but I never really quite got there because the more I would spend time doing that or looking into it, um, I would end up getting busy with my day job. And what I do is I'm a broadcast engineer for live television. Uh, so I am free to work seven days a week. And any day I have off, I don't get paid. So I have 30 boxes for sale every month and they're all going to the top bidder. So the concept of being a real estate investor is always appealing to me over the last nine years because I would like to have zero boxes for sale. Um, I would like to just pick and choose the days I wanna go to work if I wanna work. I'm an avid surfer as well. Um, so there's plenty of days that I've had to work where the waves were pumping and I couldn't go surf because I have to put food on the table like the rest of us in some manner, shape or form. So um, that's basically where I started until I found you, um, where, you know, you basically explained where it's, you're able to get in with little to no money uh, for the contract. Obviously there's always money that's involved with every transaction. But the executable part of the, that contract is, is a nominal expense. And to be able to come in and do something right by people um, on both sides of this transaction was extremely appealing and interesting to me. And that's, that's why I decided to get started with you in the beginning. Excellent. I appreciate you mentioning all that. And just for those watching this video, Ed and I share a similar uh, professional background, Ed, broadcast technician. I used to work in television production myself, so we're kind of kindred spirits in that way. <laughs> it was pretty cool. So, um, okay, so you're talking about what you were doing before, and, you know, you kind of touched on, um, you know, what attracted you to what we were doing and how we do deals and our whole method or whatever. What was it that really just put you over the edge and made you pull the trigger on getting involved with us? Well, the first thing is I looked at it, I looked at your initial pitch for the, uh, the house buying ninja stuff. And I'm like, all right, well, I've joined a bunch of programs before and they're good for credit card debt and consistent payments with an inconsistent lifestyle of work. So I was like, let me give this a go at the thousand dollar point. You know, I had that money back guarantee option. You know, let me, let me just see what this is all about. And then right off the bat, <clears throat> as I go through that entire program, how detailed and specific every actionable step is within that, I was like, wow, you know, this is very specific. 
Um, never have I been given a clear <clears throat> path towards marketing and setting up a funnel uh, in order to target leads and bring them back down to me and have everything kind of funnel to me in, in a remote way. Um, you know, I'm, as a, when I'm going from uh, one job to another, I'm never anywhere. So as a result, um, I need to be able to access things remotely. Um, it's just the nature of my lifestyle. So being able to have everything kind of centered into one point, funneled into one point was extremely easy for me to build and very attractive. So I felt motivated by every actionable step that needed to be completed. And I felt like I was really getting somewhere. It was when I got everything up to the point where I'm built, my Facebook page is set, you know, I'm dealing with uh, motivated sellers and I'm like, all right, well, you know, I could send somebody a message on Facebook and, and just kind of rot and hopefully somebody will get back to me. And I'm uh, granted you guys get back to me right away within five, 10 minutes and most times, you know, which is awesome. But there's a certain level of anxiety uh, that's there, especially not, um, being very versed and experienced uh, with what I'm doing. I know my heart's in the right place. I know, you know, I feel like I'm doing the right thing here. I got a, a, a goal and, and it's a, a, it seems to be an obtainable goal that, the, you know, just not being able to just speak my mind uh, was, was bothersome to me. I'm like, I, I'm still, I'm not quite there. I, I think maybe if I was more of an experienced real estate investor i'd be like oh this is great you know if i got any problems i could just hit these guys up yeah I'd, I'd be good at that level i think um but being just completely green nah man I, you know you, you, it's nice to get on on the phone and be like hey listen i want to talk about feelings and i want to be the little spoon tonight so i need somebody to hold me and you know uh that's why after i was speaking that over with my wife i was like you know i we should go for the the apprentice program and make that next step up because you know i i just can't afford to make these mistakes anymore uh, it's been nine years you know and wherever it's gotten me it's gotten me a revolving debt you know not revolving income so I, you know i i feel confident with you guys i, I like the strategy the actionable steps everything's involved everything is clear cut i got it all laid out in front of me and, you know, for me, like, I'm the type of person, like, I could go get in great shape. There's, we all can. And we all can learn how to eat the right way. All we have to do is just type in, how do I eat the right way on YouTube, right? But it's the difference when you got to go spend the 50 bucks and go to the gym every month, where you're actually going to make the difference because you now you're, you got skin in the game. And I think that that's, that was the, the, the difference here is that, you know, I needed that support, you know, and I was happy to pay the VIG to get in. So you guys were able to help me, you know, every step of the way. And the, you know, on top of it all, with the additional, you know, 90 days of leads coming through on top of whatever you can afford to do through your own Facebook marketing, uh, you got plenty of ways to fail your way up to the top right yes that, that's kind of the whole point it's like how can we set this thing up so that even if they make all the mistakes in the world which everybody does i did it jeff did it everybody does it in the beginning how can we still get the program participants to succeed so so that's good so you so what you were saying there is you uh joined the house buying ninja program first that's our 997 course and then you realized look let me just stop wasting time trying to figure this out on my own and do it all myself. Yeah, you got support via Facebook, the Facebook group in that program, but you're like, let's just, let's just do this. Like, if we're going to do this, I'm tired of like waiting around. Let's just get it done. And I, you know, I feel like, you know, mentoring and coaching and all that sort of thing, it's cheaper just to go ahead and pay the ginormous fee than it is to try to figure it all out on your own. Would you agree? I do agree. I agree from the standpoint of 
you know, you have a bunch of things that you want to ask questions about. And then there's a bunch of stuff that you didn't even think to ask. And there's a bunch of different variables of what other people are coming through uh, with their own leads that they're getting and, and other problems that come up, you know. A lot of times I would be on the calls and I'm listening to somebody who's like, oh, I got this tired landlord and he's got, uh, you know, eight units that he wants to get rid of, but he, and, he's, and he's willing to take $5,000 down and I'll cash flow 5000 a month. And I'm just like, yeah, I, I really feel for you, you know, a lot. Um, but, you know, it's exciting to hear that, you know, hey, that's, that could be a possibility for me. And like, if that happens, how would I deal with it? You know, now if I'm on my own in my own Facebook group, I'm kind of limited to what kind of obstacles I choose to address because I'm in my own little world. You know, I could read through all the posts of everything, but that takes time. You know, when you're on these, uh, the conference calls, it just, you know, you listen to all these people's issues or whatever, and then you, you know, you have a lot of aha moments or, you know, you just can't take, you can't write down the notes fast enough. And the insight that comes from all you guys is just invaluable. Um, because it's not anything that I had in my head to even think about as a possible option. You can only answer the questions I'm going to ask you in a Facebook group, you know, but you'll get answers to questions you never even thought were even an issue or insight in different ways to get ahead that are going to put you miles above. And then, yeah, the money up front, yeah, it's, it's a hit, but at the same token, if you can if you can swing it, you're kind of, you're paying for those mistakes years and time off your life. And, you know, without, how, you know, that, that's, you know, the, the risk is nominal in that, in that, when you make that comparison, you're like, all right, I'm going to spend X amount of dollars for this program to get involved. I'm going to get 90, 90 leads. And I got five day hour, at least an hour support from the team on top of a Facebook group. You know, you're like, oh, that sounds really awesome. But then when you start going through that process, it's, you're like, the, the amount of support and the, the feeling of confidence that you can execute this deal because you see your, 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 your classmates succeeding and getting forward, dealing with issues and stuff. They're like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm anticipating having to deal with that in a couple of weeks when I have to deal with the title and escrow company. How did you deal with it? Who do you deal with? What type, you know, and all the, the minutia that goes along with that. It's just, um, it's, it's, it's great. It just, it just starts, it just starts unraveling, just unraveling this, this knot of questions and, and the process It's just, it's, it's a good thing, man. It's just, it's a really good thing. You know, I wouldn't change. The only thing I would have changed is that I, I wish I would have mentioned 2011. That would have been nice. Yeah. Yeah. That would have been nice. Yeah. I, I've spent my tens of thousands of uh, training programs uh, in the past. I got started back in 08 and 09 and same story. You know what I mean? It's like, you try to do it all on your own. You buy the wrong program, this program, that program, and it just starts racking up credit card debt. And you're out there spinning your wheels. And, you know, the, the trick that I've found, and I just tell everybody this, like the, there's the secret to success is just keep going. You know, yes. if you had quit in 2012, you know, like we wouldn't be here today talking. You know right. I mean? Right. Yeah. Um, so going through the program, had a lot of support and, you know, hearing answers to questions you didn't even think to ask but you get that uh, a lot more insight from the group setting and listening to me and jeff on the calls and that sort of thing um now tell us about your the first deal that you just completed here tell us about that how the lead came in what was the story briefly with the seller you know and what was your journey like with that deal yeah so there was no reason why i should have pulled this thing off uh, on any level. Uh, I really didn't know much of how to talk to people. Um, uh, I'm like, a, like socially illiterate. I know everything's a complete mess. I just happened to find a motivated guy that just felt as though that I was going to do the right thing by him, you know, which I completely was. And then I was also 100% transparent with the guy. I was like, look, I'm going to get you 
the guy wanted, uh, he wanted 160 for his house. It was worth 190. Uh, that's the, the comps, uh, with the tax assessment was 193. It's a, uh, mobile home fixed to a permanent foundation, three bedroom, two bath, double wide on 19,000 square foot lot. It's the nicest place in the crappiest part of town. Uh, so ask, you know, I eventually got him down to 158. I entered into a contract with him. Um, the property was listed with an agent and the agent just basically listed it. And then, you know, we hit the pandemic. So there was no action happening. And he's like, I can't, I got to sell this house. I want to retire. He was a welder. And I was like, all right, well, you know, um, I'll give you, you know, I'll give you 158, see if you can get out of the listing contract. Got out of the contract, I locked them up at 158. And the first mistake I made was I have a neighbor uh, that can show the property for me uh, while I'm gone and moving out all my stuff. Well, look, horrible, horrible decision. Sounded great, right? So I started like, oh, well, I don't have to put on a lockbox. I don't have to worry about his house getting broken into. Uh, you know, because that certainly was a concern of mine. Um, so the neighbor is showing the property, but she has her own agenda. Uh, she lives in the crappy house next door to the really nice house. Um, and I'm sure that she wanted the really nice house. So as she's showing uh, people the house, like, yeah, I don't think he's going to take that. I don't, I don't know. I wouldn't go, uh, you know, I know you're offering it to pay him, uh, you know, let's say $1,200 a month in rent, but I think he wants way more than that. So I wouldn't even bother with that. So 90 days goes by, 90 days goes by with this long story. So I, I I'm, I'm on the phone with Garner, who's the seller of the property. And I'm like, Garner, I'm doing, I'm like, I talk to at least 15 people a day that are, in, that are reaching out to me on my Facebook ads. Because, uh, you know, at this point, you know, it's, I don't start off spending $7 a day uh, in my marketing. And now I'm up to like 15 bucks and I'm scaling back my seller leads campaign to compensate for the buyer because I'm coming to the end of this contract. I don't want to lose it. It's my first contract. Man. I don't want to lose this thing. Uh, so I uh, explain to him what's going on. I go, I keep on sending people over there. And then they talk with Sharon. And then I don't hear from them again. I go, why don't we try this? Why don't we try to put the lockbox on the property and see what happens? Um, I got, and then within 30 days, I have two buyers lined up. First buyer is, is well within my cash range. And, you know, it's like $400, $350, $400 a month. They, they are... Uh, scraping two nickels to make a dime uh to make it happen the good people good people you know and uh, i want to make it happen for them so i'm like all right well you know send us a deposit then the next people call up they go uh yeah listen we we want to see the house i'm like all right you can go see it i'm like i'm just letting you know i got somebody lined up They're like okay uh we still want to see it they go see it they go we love it um you know we're prepared to give you uh two thousand a month you know, or we can even go as high as 2150. I was like, okay, all right, let's take a look at your credit. You know, now in my head, I'm losing my mind. I'm like, I can't, you know, so this is this at this point, it's going from a three to 500, you know, 350 cash flow a month to, to $1,300 a month cash flow. And they're like, well, listen, we can do 2000 a month, 2150 a month. Um, but we can only give you $5,000 down. I'd be like, oh, you know, I can pretty flexible with that. Let me see what I can do. Uh, let's, let's talk to the credit people, you know, and see what comes up. I'm like hanging up the phone. I'm cracking bottles. I'm going sick. You know, I can't believe this, this miracle is about to ensue. So um, sure enough, uh, you know, they, they're going to qualify within 18 months. Uh, so I signed them up on an 18 month lease at 2000 a month. And I said, the extra 150 that you said that you'd be able to afford, let's do that towards down payment assistance. Uh, so that's the way I set it up. Uh, I closed with the seller. I told him I had a buyer on the hook because he was fully aware that 
I'm not going to be able to close unless I got a buyer lined up. So he was on board. I the lines of communication are constant. Hey, Ed, how's it going? Every three, four days. This is what I got. This is where I'm at. This is where we're going. And then close with him, close with the buyers. And uh, they got keys two days ago, Tuesday. Tuesday. Nice. Yeah. Dude, that's awesome. So tell me uh, the just the high, high level numbers on the deal. You bought the place for 158 with zero down, I assume? So $10 down, got it for 150. Because after okay. the 90 days, I was like, listen, you know, Garner, I've taken on a lot of marketing expenses here. We went with somebody that you trusted to sell the property. She's slowing us both down. It's costing money. You know, what's the least you'll be able to take on this property? Because I want to, I know I can sell it under the right circumstances, you know? And he said, I, I can't go lower than 150. Okay. 150 it is. So 150, okay. locked them up, $10 down. How much did he owe on the house? He owed sixty-eight thousand. Okay, with a monthly payment of six seven fifty. Seven fifty. Okay. So with the escrow company, the way it ended up setting it up, it wasn't a true subject to deal. It was a wrap. So they wrapped the financing around it. That's the way the escrow people wanted to do it to That's get fine. these people to yeah. get them on the phone was a long story. Yeah. They're the only yeah. title company in the entire county. This is the way you want it. No problem. What else <laughs> no do you problem. need? What else do you need from me? You know, That's right. So yeah. That was it. So it's now it's it's eight hundred dollars a month uh, to maintain his mortgage. He okay. want he's a, he's a retired guy, so he wants to you know he wants his money. Uh, so it's not an open ended contract. Uh, I told him I'm like give me uh, four years. Is mm -hmm. I was like you know I asked him what's the most that you know how long can he wait. And he goes, I don't really want to wait that long. Uh, so I was like, you know, how about five years? He goes, I can't wait that long. And I'm like, four? <laughs> so he took four. In my mind, I'm like, you know, at first I was a little bit nervous. Like, hey, how am I going to come up with 120 grand or whatever the difference is between? But if I keep on doing deals like this, I'll have the money to cash them out. If they can't, if these guys yeah. can't buy. No, you're, you're not going to cash them out. You're going to get your buyer to cash you out. You're not gonna, I'm not going to let you write a $120,000 check to this guy. No, right? I appreciate you. I'm <laughs> worst case scenario, but you're okay, right. All right. All right. All right. You're yeah. right. I was like, in worst case scenario, I keep on doing deals like this. I, I, if yeah. I had to write him a check for 120, it wouldn't be a problem. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. So but you bought it. Yeah. No, you I bought agree. it for 150, 150, $10 down, uh, 800 a month now and four year term. Correct. And then you sold it to a lease option tenant buyer for what were the numbers on that then? One seventy seven five hundred. Okay, with five thousand down. Five thousand down, and two thousand a month lease payment. Correct. And then an extra one hundred and fifty for down payment assistance. Right, and then I throw another two twenty five, which I keep knocking off the purchase price every month. For the so, extra one hundred and fifty. Okay. Correct. So gotcha. therefore. That it ends up taking 375 off the purchase price. And if they're able to cash me out in 18 months, I cash flow that large amount of 1350 a month and I walk away with 21,000. Nice. Yeah. Heck yeah, dude. Yeah, I'll take these all day. Yeah, man. Let's go do one of those a week or, every, you know, every day of the week. Yeah. Right? That's yeah. awesome, man. That's great. Okay. So, and before we started recording here, you were talking about how, you know, it's like you can think about and imagine doing all this stuff, but until you actually do it, it's not really real. So is it real now? I mean, is it like, yeah. what, what, how, is, how is it different now that it's actually tangible in your hand? You've done it. You know, I think that like a lot of, it's, I have a tendency, I've always thought big, I've always thought big my whole life. And I look at these, like, like one of my goals is to own a gunboat 68. It's a 68-foot luxury catamaran that does 400 nautical miles a day on autopilot. And as a surfer and a sailor, I, you know, I've been, I, that's the dream. You know, like, you look at a picture of that, and you're like, you know, uh, one day I'm going to have that, you know. And that's, it's abstract, but today it's not. 
it's tangible, you know? So I say, okay, well, I need 35,000 a month passive just to support the boat. Okay, so that's 35 of these deals. That's the boat right there. So that's taken Thank care you. of. So it's, it's different um, because I've done this deal. This, this all happened. And, and, you know, the other side of it, yeah, like, you, you know, mentally it's, it's, it's possible. It's possible for anyone. And, you know, it, it's different when it's possible for me, you know, because now it's, it's, it's you know, there's money coming in, you know, that's supporting some of the money that's going out. Um, so eventually it will tip, you know, and that's, that's exciting. The other thing is that, you know, these guys wrote the sellers, they wrote a script, they wrote it down, they wrote it down and then they video recorded themselves. They're, they're in their sixties, man. And, you know, you can see, you know, they, they video recorded, you can watch them reading it. I, I didn't tell them to, to read this script. You know, they did it. Yeah. yeah. You know? You're talking about they, they did a testimonial video for you, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah. exactly. They, they sent me a video testimonial and, uh, yeah, they're reading the script. They're like, thanks for being a straight shooter, you know? I mean, <laughs> awesome. You know, I didn't ask, you know, I haven't said straight shooter. You know, it's just not part of my everyday vocabulary. Awesome stuff. And then the, the buyer, the tenants... When, when I was like, when they finished giving me all their deposit and they're like, what else do we need? I was like, your keys, they're in the lockbox. They had to pull over the car because they were crying and embracing each other because they didn't ever think that they were going to have this opportunity to buy a house. They screwed up credit. One, you know, guy does rehab on cars. He's independent contractor, doesn't have a regular job. So qualifying for a mortgage is uh, a challenge, especially in a pressed economy, like beyond ecstatic. Thank you so much, you know, I'm eternally grateful on both sides of the coin while I'm walking away making 1350 a month for a $10 down deal, you know? I feel like the, the more, you know, the more money you make on the deal, the more sophisticated the people are around you. I could be wrong, I don't know, but um, that's the, the deal I'm going to go with in my head moving forward. I'm like, so, uh, it's great. It's a great feeling. And, you know, you have, I personally, I have the validation knowing that I'm doing the right thing by people. I'm providing a service and doing something good for people around me and, uh, establishing passive income for myself, that security for my family that I've always wanted. You know, I mean, none of us have any security. You know, I think that if anybody has any type of security in this world, besides real estate investors, it's the freelance broadcast technician, because I have 20 different clients. I work for ABC, NBC, CBS, and various other little side projects of people that want to do stuff. So as soon as I get fired, I get a call time for the next day from somebody else at a different rate. So I, I have that security of my reputation, but... It's always been like, well, how, how long do I want to keep on pushing road cases onto the back of a truck? Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm good at it. You know, I can push the a road case like nobody's business, man. You know, it's got <laughs> wheels and a box. I can, I can roll that thing, man. But, yeah. you know, I don't want to be doing that in my 70s. Oh, Nobody yeah. does. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, and that's why uh, I'm grateful now that I'm in a position where you know, I got you, I got you, I got your team, you know, and how you guys are evolving and there to support me is, it's invaluable that the, the, the chances of me getting there on my own, just based upon the fact that I wanted to start in 2011. And I just did my first deal in the middle of a pandemic during 2020 is a, is a true testament to the value that you guys are bringing to my table. Well, that's good to hear, man. What would you say to, uh, somebody who is considering joining any of our programs, Ninja or Apprentice, whatever, uh, what would you say to them right now uh, that you wish somebody had told you beforehand uh, or maybe even back in 2011? Now you're in the right spot. 
you know, do, do go as far as you, as you feel as though that you can take it. If you could have only afford the uh, ninja program, then do that, at least do that. At least get yourself involved some way, somehow. Because, you know, you have that, that level of support is just phenomenal. You can't get that. You, and there's, there's nobody else out there that has that ability to answer your questions. You know, and, and the level of support, you know, like it's going to take somebody within, within a half hour, somebody's going to get back to you, realistically. That's immeasurable. You know, a lot of these programs that you buy, I, I can't think of anything offhand, but just chances are you're buying something that's already been pre-done. Somebody that's already recorded, gone through all the steps and done everything, which is much like what you did with your course. You have that, that level of you go through every step, you map everything out and you build out your system. But beyond that, it's been like an email support or, or anything. It's, you're kind of stuck there out on your own. Whereas being involved with your group where it's, you have a multitude of people that are there to answer your question. I may ask you a direct question and then Ashley will answer it. Yeah. I may ask Ashley a question and then Tyler will ask, answer. I don't know. I'll just throw questions out there. Just seeing what sticks to the wall. <laughs> Somebody's going to pick it off, man. It's great. You know, Beyond the other aspect, which I mentioned earlier, is that the questions you didn't think to ask, which are being answered for you on a regular, it's yeah. at least you're getting involved. But if you if you can make the stretch for the 90 day apprentice, you know, make it happen because that's where you are going to make the difference. In fact, that's where I got this deal. Was one of your was one of your leads? It wasn't from my Facebook marketing. Not not that there's any difference. It's the same stuff, but uh, you know that's where I got this deal in the first place. And the guy was patient enough. I mean, you know, I entered into a contract with him in May. I just closed last week. Yeah. You know, I mean, the the amount of back and forth and the level of trust and rapport that I had with this gentleman was is exceptional you yeah know, it's extremely rare you know that's all to your credit man and yeah. you know that and you know I, I tell people all the time it's like you you get in front of the right seller you can make a deal happen you know right. no right. matter what obstacle comes up if you've got that rapport with them like you had with this guy like i gotta trust you i mean the way we do this business you know we're helping them we're helping the buyer we just put them you know, put the whole deal together and uh, everybody wins. That's awesome, right. man. Yeah, it is. And the other thing too, now that I know that this is a reality and a possibility is that there's a level of desperation that has just been lifted off of my shoulders where like, you know, I remember feeling like you're trying to make a deal out of something that isn't really a deal. And now I just kind of have the patience because I don't, Going through everything that I went through with title companies and, um, you know, the, 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 the helpful neighbor, uh, that after all that said and done, like, I don't want to have to go through that song and dance with, with anyone that's going to start off being a long story. But they're going to be a long story and they're going to be hemming and hawing the whole way to signing the contract. It's going to be that way the whole time. And yep. if you're going to be doing a lease option deal with them or subject to deal, the story's never going to end. Yeah. You know, and nobody needs these problems. So just be patient, you know, help the yep. people that want your help. And this, and that's what we're doing. Helping people, yep. helping yep. ourselves. It's a wonderful thing. Yeah. There's plenty of those people out there. Plenty of those people to work with that want your help. So that's good. Yeah. Well, awesome, Ed. Was there anything I didn't ask you, but I probably should have, or anything you wanted to bring up for our uh, viewers at home before we sign off? Uh, no, I just, uh, I, I just think that it's just a matter of, you know, obviously anybody who's got any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. I, you know, I talk to them directly. I can't recommend you guys enough. It, the, the idea of being able to achieve goals uh, in a realistic manner that never existed 
prior. I I knew it in an abstract context, but now it's now it's a reality. Now I'm like, all right, you know, like I'll say to my wife, so when you decide to start building out our 200 acre compound, you know, what's the first thing you're gonna do? Are you gonna go with goats or are you gonna, you know, I don't know. It's like tell me, tell me where, where you're at with that. I am nowhere near close to buying any 200 acre compound, but that's now, you know, and that's a wonderful thing, you know, and that's all possible because of you and your team. That's you great, know? man. There's no way I could possibly say thank you enough. Well, you know? I appreciate it. Because enough, of, yeah, 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 no, it's awesome. I mean, I, I'm in a position now where I can potentially start building out generational wealth for my family in a passive way. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. And that's great. And thank well, awesome. like I said, I can't thank you guys enough. Yeah. Well, we're glad to have you, man. And uh, I look forward to uh, seeing more deals from you. Yeah, man. Awesome. So, yeah. Well, thanks so much, Ed, for your time. I appreciate it and all your uh, insight and feedback. And thanks for sharing with uh, everybody watching at home uh, who might be considering joining one of our programs. I really appreciate that. So, um, all right. We'll just wrap it up and uh, I'll see you on the next uh, Q&A call then. Awesome. Sounds good.